Hey, welcome to Life Tech Gaming. We're here with uh, another chit chat podcast. We're actually going to talk about Ant Man and the Wasp. Now, we do want to preface if you have not seen it yet, we waited almost a week and more time, just as long as we could, to make sure that all you guys have a chance to see it because it's spoilers. We're going to talk about every single thing that we can, the different crossovers, and so let's go ahead and start off by everyone introducing my themselves. I'm Dax. I'm Tim. I'm Danny. And I'm Brian. And uh, so, Brian, what did you think about the movie overall? Okay, yeah, non-spoiler overall. Um, I thought it was great. Um, there was a lot of really cool, like, uh, small cameos for, um, you know, us super nerds. And um, personally, yeah, <laughs> personally, I think I think it was better than the first one, actually. And um, not only that, but it had like it had one of my favorite villains, but just a different twist on it. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, that's what I that's what I think. Who was your favorite no. villain? Uh, Ghost. <laughs> In the comics, Ghost is a really great villain. So, do you like the the take that they had on it, not being like a true villain, or um, would you prefer yeah, no, a full I, out Ghost villain? I I like this character um, mainly because the character from um, from the comics is basically not even the same person. It's kind of like they're just going off of the same like moniker and look or whatever be um but uh, i'll probably explain more later in the podcast about that but i think i think it was it was good good interpretation of the character now danny what are your thoughts on uh it being is it better than the first one yeah it's definitely better than the first one i mean i'm i'm kind of one of those people now that really just doesn't want an origin story uh, so when I go back to movies that are like pure origin story, I'm kind of, you know, like, okay, this is cool. It works, but I, I would really like to have just a short origin and then jump into more stuff. What I liked about this one was instead of giving us, okay, now we have this Ant-Man's already been introed and we kind of intro Wasp, but like, let's not make this just their movie. Like, there was a lot of time where he spent out of costume, and I like that. I like the fact that he wore the robe half the time, the bathrobe. He said it was a callback to the Big Lebowski, so he's oh, like great. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tim, what do you think about the uh, ants? What was your favorite ant moment? No, you can go <laughs> ahead. And we'll just start rolling into it. Okay, so big spoiler warning. We're going into what happens with ants, okay? In an <laughs> Ant Man movie, stuff happens with ants. <laughs> All right, Tim, I gave you time to think. What do you think? Uh, oh well, I like I like um, the part that um, I like two parts. One, there was the um, they got the ant to um, kind of like seven for him while he was being <laughs> Yes. <laughs> while he was at home arrest. And um, the other one was um, when the ants were flying, they were getting eaten by the, um, uh, was it the penguin? Not the penguin. The seagulls. But, like, the yeah, seagulls. the seagulls. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that, that was one the... Antonio Banderas. Yeah, Antonio. <laughs> Antonio Banderas. <laughs> Uh, what was the other name? Uh, 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 Aunt Marie Antoinette. You know, was one I no, think. There's another. There was a different one. Oh my god, I can't remember. I remember being. That's something. another thing. My I gotta go like, see it again it. to see all those. Yeah. No. Yeah. It was like a full name, and the last name had the ant in it. It wasn't Mark no. Antony, was it? No. 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 no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah. No, was 
Yeah, no, yeah, Anthony there's, yeah, there's, was there's the Anthony. first one. Yeah, but he started giving them like celebrity and like historical character names. More yeah, than just, like a single name. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, I do have to say, let's go ahead and talk about the biggest thing that everyone wants to talk about, which is the mid credit scene. The fact that this movie takes place beforehand, we got the timeline, it's been two years, and he has three days left on his sentence. And so it, the span of the movie takes place within the span of those three hours. So... Then we hit the mid credit scene that's catching all the way up to Infinity War. So, go ahead. Who wants to spoil it? What happens? <laughs> the snap. The snap. <laughs> oh, snap. I mean, leaving, leaving uh, Ant-Man inside the quantum realm. You know, you can't it's kind of it's kind of hard to think about how they're going to do that but i've i've read some things talking about how part of uh having all the infinity stones is you could since the quantum realm in the comic books is actually uh another dimension uh they're going to kind of make it like another dimension in the movies like he'll they'll be able to snap him back or something you know <laughs> okay, the only thing only thing I want to know it are the guys from XCon gone. Or are they still there? Luis and the other two well, guys. I think I think Cassie, his daughter, is gonna still be there because be there. she's signed there's a new actress signed on, mm-hmm, which is like mm-hmm. 15, 16 year old, so yep. you could have her be the superhero like she was talking about. Well, you know why that's significant? In Wait, the- did they really? Yeah, they, they well yes. they have a casting they had a casting call, yeah. Huh. Yes. Um and it was for Cassie sig- Lang. Why that's significant in the comics Cassie Lang Cassie Lang is a superhero called Stature. And she grows like Ant Man. Yeah, she has so, the same general powers. Same powers, yeah. Um, so that's a big deal. And she Which joins that a group is what everyone's called the Young Avengers. talking about a possible time jump yeah. for Avengers 4. We start out with uh, like what yeah, makes uh, it really set in stone is Tony Stark is now having to deal with the fact that he killed this little kid, brought him up into space, and Spider-Man's gone forever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it would kind of make sense um, to have the time jump. Mm-hmm. I mean, it. I think that's really cool. It actually set up more for Miss Miss Marvel, right? Captain Marvel. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Next, right? Yeah, that's coming next February, February or March. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Something like that. I think it's February. Yeah. February. And then uh did you guys catch uh Michelle Pfeiffer's character the wasp was talking about time vortex? So that could be mm. the whole yeah. special wristbands that everyone had get you into the quantum realm so we can jump through the time vortexes. Yeah. That that's that's interesting. Um also I don't know if you guys re- remember this. It was soup it was like kind of pushed under the rug during Infinity War um, while they were doing interviews um, Sebastian Stan um, who plays winner, who plays Bucky mm-hmm. he actually said he did a scene with um, Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer um, but we haven't seen a scene with the three of them so probably in, in the next movie. So, Which, yeah. But they were snapped. So what but, if they're sitting in the Soul Stone but that could in also, the Little Realm? There could be that, or that could be something in the past. Could, <laughs> well, it would make sense. The past makes sense because yeah. of the old costumes. Yeah. But, like, because Bucky was 
around and it could be them as younger and stuff or or it could just be all the people who were snapped or whatever who knows i i mean after infinity war i don't know if anyone could guess it like what's going to happen no no <laughs> at all <laughs> like that threw us this, for a curveball this i don't like I don't think we all know what Mich- Michelle Pfeiffer is gonna do for her role because she's back and now she's gone. Yeah. So what exactly yeah. is she gonna do? So well, she has lot- great powers. Yeah, she has great powers, but because she's yeah she's gone. So they were yeah they weren't finished killing ghosts. That's the thing they were going to. Yeah, so you've got ghosts now sitting on the outside. Well, Scott's sitting in the middle of the quantum realm, supposed to be getting this quantum energy to save her. Yeah. You know what's funny? I didn't catch that that's what they were doing. Yeah, they said that really it was yeah. really quick. They didn't even they didn't even say her name. Yeah. Yeah. That was just like a little temporal instant health yeah. taking yeah. a BC powder. Okay. But basically they didn't even say her name. They just said we need to get this to um to help our new friend basically. Yeah, our new friend. That's right. So Oh, so at the end, after the post or the mid credit scene happens, there's this little family sitting in front of me, and there's like three younger kids. The youngest one is like got to be a four or five year old little boy, and yeah. he goes, "Wait, so what happens?" And so the younger <laughs> sister, who's probably like twelve, thirteen, goes, "Remember at the end of Infinity War, the snap?" Ooh. And the kid looks at the screen, goes, "They're dead! They're all dead!" <laughs> <laughs> and just start screaming, and the, our whole theater just started bursting with oh, laughter. Oh my god! It, so everyone is like affected by this snap. Like at the end of Infinity War, if you keep calling back to that, it, it was a great way to tie this movie yeah. off. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, and I was thinking, a lot of people said the ending, ending credits, like right after the credits roll, mm-hmm. was like a throwaway like a throwaway scene, because it kind of is. It's, it's kind of throwaway. And it's yeah, just, but, oh, yeah. You it's saw just it on the iPhone, so now you get to see it in big screen. But it was really cool to see, uh, like, everything was quiet, Scott's mm-hmm. door was open, and you even saw on the TV the um, broadcast alert. Emergency you know, broadcast, emergency broadcast yeah. alert. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought that was really cool of an addition. That was really neat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you guys catch or hear about the fact that when Scott was in the quantum realm and right after like Michelle's voice cuts out, Evangeline Lilly cuts out on the countdown, there's a face. And so it's not clear. I have to see it again because I didn't see it. I did remember seeing the lights. There's a rainbow, just like the infinity stones on the gauntlet, all the colors rainbowing. And then that's when it cuts out. And so, like, you get to see the snap kind of fractured inside the quantum realm. But um, there's talks it might be possibly, like, like or Mamu or Thanos or something even bigger, like Eternity, which then goes back to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 when Peter Quill is looking up and goes, I see it, Eternity, and his eyes turn into... Just like what eternity the stars look like. And that's the one thing that Thanos took over is eternity comes and goes back in Infinity Gauntlet, the comic books back in 1991. He's talking about it and basically like he eternity comes over and is all pissed off at Thanos and is like, you can't be here. You can't do this. Like, this is my domain. This is my realm. And then Thanos goes, no, I don't think so. And he disappears. And then all of the giant higher-ups, the Celestials, come forward. And they're like, okay, well, I guess because Thanos is like the big bad now, he can go ahead and take over. And he takes over as Eternity. Now I'm going to have to go back and see the movie, though, just to see if I can see the face. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I know Kevin Feige did there. say that something was in the quantum realm. Like, we see stuff just like the Wasp was in the first Ant-Man. Like, you could see a silhouette of the Wasp flying in the background. So there are clues to what's going to happen in the future 
it might not be like exactly what yeah. I was talking about because that's that's ridiculous. That's a huge concept. <laughs> like Darren said, it almost went over his head. That's going to go over most of the general public's I'm, head. Like I'm wondering if it could almost be Doctor Strange in the uh, whatever, like his ghost form. I can't remember. Oh, when he was flying around, his astral plane. Astral his projection. Astral plane. Like, what if he went into astral projection before he got snapped, and that's like his end goal? end game or whatever yeah is he's gonna be like guiding them like this is the la this is the one uh future that i saw like like maybe ant-man is the key to starting the next avengers movie like he like he, like you were saying he has to go through those temporal things in order to like and like somebody has to show him right so, I don't know. that'd be cool I mean, he was an antenna, which yeah. that whole <laughs> him pretending to be Michelle Pfeiffer, Paul Rudd deserves an award that for that. Great. He is a great actor. Well, now that you brought that up, <laughs> what if he's the antenna to like like some people are saying? What if the people who were snapped were not actually destroyed? Yeah. Um, what if he is then the ant antenna again to find them because he still has that connection. That'd be that super would... awesome. <laughs> like the like the smallest little things in Ant Man lead to the biggest the stuff big, in, uh, in Avengers Four. That is a giant <laughs> Ant Man awesomeness. I don't know. It would. It would. I mean, that's kind of like what they were saying. Is like this movie kind of solidifies Ant Man more into uh, having a bigger role in the Avengers, which. Yeah, well, he and big thing was um, he both Ant Man and the Wasp were supposed to be in the first Avengers movie, but they got cut. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's kind of like an apology to the character. Ant Man was supposed to take Spider Man's place for Iron Man, if like be on uh, Iron yeah. Man's team if they the Sony deal wouldn't go through too. So they've been trying yeah. to have like more Ant Man as a mm -hmm. star. Yeah, but now you have everyone wants to see what's going on in this the, the quantum realm. Like, yeah. I want to see this. <laughs> you could do a whole movie just in that universe, going through. Yeah, he found his way out before, so. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I love the uh, the what are they called tardigrades? The oh the sugar oh, bears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big yeah. weird like microorganisms yes. that, so that could survive in space. Yeah, isn't there what they teeth or are they sucking like trying to suck them or something? I don't yeah, know well, what they were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're probably trying to eat them. But, yeah. Now, what did you think of Michelle Pfeiffer and like the CGI in the beginning? Um, I her thought face was, bringing I thought her great. great job. Yeah, she looked like Catwoman. Yeah, yeah. No, Dude. and then I, I, I don't know. I liked her the way she acted it. I liked her character. Um, she was super relatable. Like, um. I think because she was so relatable, it made it more of an impact to like for Hope's character of like I've had this amazing mom and now she's gone, and this is yeah. my life without her. Um, and I think it made it more rounded out her character even. And then you could see some of the jokes that she was doing were kind of like things that her mom would have said. Definitely in the back in the day and stuff. So I don't know. It just I think it rounded out the Wasp as a character to have such a good actress and character as her mom for her mom. So her fight scenes were amazing. <clears throat> oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah, talk about like okay, that, that makes me excited for like Captain Marvel. Like they made the fights like. Like, we've never seen, other than, like, Black Widow, we've never seen, 
um, a, a female character like you know go that badass. I mean, I guess oh, Black yeah. Widow and like Okoye. Um, but like Marvel loves the female leg no, throw yeah. down around the neck, like spin <laughs> yeah, you down, yeah. super but takedowns. Like, in for somehow the director in that moment, uh, that first fight scene um, with that mobster guy and all of his goons, um, where it's just her. In that moment, it was just the Wasp. Like it was a, mm-hmm. just the Wasp movie, and I was like, okay, it, yeah, like this is going into Captain Marvel. Cause like like even like I said even all like the other fight scenes with all the other badass women in Marvel, it still felt like they were part of a bigger movie with other characters. But like like I said in that moment, that like it was like that's o- the only character in this movie is the Wasp. Like this is her movie right now. So that's just like just the director just killed it right there. <laughs> oh, I'm guessing um, you didn't have that tech. Oh no, I, I did. did. <laughs> I did oh, like that the whole beginning too. It, it wasn't with Scott and uh, Hank Pym running at each other, giving each other hugs. Like <laughs> he was pissed. He yeah. was generally no, mad, yeah. ticked <laughs> off. And no, you threw away my suit. Well, what if I didn't actually like throw it away? It was your life's work. Throw it away my suit. <laughs> no, that was great. You know what I really enjoyed? You know, going kind of going back to the mid credits, post credits type thing. Mm-hmm. At the very end, it said Ant Man and Wasp will be back, and it had a exclamation question point. Mark. Boy, right. it, then it went yeah. away and turned into a question mark. You know? <laughs> no, yes, God. that was great. That was good. <laughs> The movies start to finish. Yeah. It's just it's a solid film in itself, but it's a great Marvel movie. Oh, yeah. It really mm-hmm. is like universe building to the extreme. Yeah. The just the fact like Michael Pena was oh perfect. My God. Like his whole oh, when, yeah. he had the, when he <laughs> the whole truth serum, it's a truth yes. serum. There's no such thing as a truth serum. And he's getting <laughs> Nah, it's a truth serum. And then he <laughs> he takes serum. it. And he Whoa. tells that whole it is a t- story. <laughs> that whole story he tells, and Michael Pena coming out with that wig. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, that was perfect. No. They just they just took that 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 gag from the first one and just made it like way better. Oh yeah. It, yeah. It, was, it, uh, it wasn't just a repeat of the same no. thing. No. Right. I mean, oh, it was yeah. great. And then um, I mean, when yeah. he's talking about getting this, he's like, I wish I had a suit. It, yeah. Or <laughs> yeah. just a suit. <laughs> just a suit. I mean, they gave him some like time to like um, be like kind of superhero driving the car. Yeah, to, yeah. yeah. He got like, his yeah, car and Hot Wheels. And stuff. Oh, that was fan- that yeah, Hot Wheels thing. The whole them. thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they got the whole set of cars and stuff. And like, they made like how his character, like his company, is going broke, and like oh suddenly God. at the end, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> now okay, I totally like, think his company X Con X- is X-Con. because X-Con. Of Fox. It is X Con, and it's oh, getting us more yeah. like mutants. That and oh, it's uh, what was it? Michelle Pfeiffer's talking about how it something happened to me out there. I had to adapt. Evolution, mm. like we're. It, this is X Men getting us prepped yeah. for something happening in the Marvel universe with mutations, you know, evolution. Like, X Men like w- name drop something. Yeah, like, they, no. it's these are the little stepping stones that they're setting. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, it probably has to do with something like either something that Thanos does or um, yeah, something what that they have to do to through through their time travel or whatever. But we'll, we'll find out soon enough because the yeah. coming con is right around the corner, I believe. <laughs> yeah, uh, just give us the title, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want to know, so I can theory craft from that. Yeah. You know, it's been enough time yeah. that they can tell us. Everyone who's going to see it saw it. Yeah, that's what I thought too. What would be hysterical is if they suddenly come out and they're like, Infinity War Part 2! 
<laughs> yeah, I know. You like the weird giant troll <laughs> or Infinity Wars with like an S at the end? Yeah, like it's aliens. like aliens. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. They threw they, yeah. that in <laughs> in Infinity War. Predator, <laughs> There's also the the guy who apparently worked on Avengers Four on his resume, mm-hmm. and it says all that. It says Endgame. Endgame. And yeah. game, because those are the exact words that uh, Doctor Strange. And then Strange... it got removed. Yep. Yeah. So I'm off. wondering if it's end game. Yeah. Which yeah, Doctor Strange said this is the we're in the end game. We're in the end game. I'd be okay yep. with that. And then Doctor Strange goes and talks that with him, man. And then with that, that could Tied be the together. end of Avengers movies for a while. Even. I kind of hope it is. Give like, us a new team. Yeah, we could go like do the new Avengers. Avengers. Yeah, the we'll do new yeah. Avengers, the whatever. Ultimates. Ultimates. I mean, you could do a lot I want of things. The Thunderbolts. I mean, I'm <laughs> fine. I'm fine with them just doing like a bunch of standalone movies, and then we come back to the Avengers, or do like a bunch of team up movies, like Captain America: Civil War. You know, kind of move yeah. yeah. that for a while, and then we go back to Avengers again later. It, what I would like to see is that the old Avengers actually do get like a break you know like yes, yeah. you know let let tony stark have his happy ending you uh, know you know i actually he can thought, pop in on a facetime you know right. what you know what came to my mind when i was leaving the theater after seeing ant-man and the wasp was what about if the old of like the all the originals kind of retire and then some of them do kind of like an illuminati thing That'd be cool to see Illuminati. And build like, that thinking, every post-credit like scene is Pym. Illuminati. I'm thinking like Hank Pym, Janet Van Dyne. Yes. Um, uh, you know, Robert Downey, you know, um, Tony, Tony Stark. Tony Stark, Black and Panther. Black Panther. You know, just like the top tier characters, the smartest ones, the ones who have been around the longest, all are, you know, basically trying to figure out where do we go from here? after Endgame. I think that'd be really cool. And then like have some kind of moral stuff. Like they don't have to have their own movie, but just kind of be like in the background. Like Robert Downey Jr. Doesn't have to be Iron Man anymore. He just has to be Tony Stark. And I think that would be really cool. Or he could be like, Hey, so I know I don't have Jarvis anymore. I know you've mm-hmm. had Friday. I turned myself into an AI. And <laughs> that's how we have Robert Downey Jr. as the AI. Voice over all the time. Yeah. Because yeah. then he just goes, shows up in pajamas, makes a couple mm-hmm. $10 million, and Calls then walks away. <laughs> wow. No, I'm, like that, that's immediately what came to my mind was that was Illuminati. After yeah. seeing, you know, Janet coming back. And everything, and I'm just like, okay, we got all these hyper intelligent people uh, working together. Who work? I mean, technically, early Shield was basically the Illuminati in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, that, like that vid, um, the flashback scene in the first Ant Man. Right. That was basically. You were just missing. That was basically, the yeah. Illuminati. Janet, but yeah. Here, I've got the question. The big mm-hmm. question here. Who wore it better, Michelle Pfeiffer or Kurt Russell? <laughs> oh, you talking about their their costume looked very similar. The costume, very similar, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Michelle well, Pfeiffer. Yeah, yeah. Her, her wing was... scythe. Yeah, oh, that was cool. Oh, that was epic. Um. But, like, basically her – I don't know where she got that extra, like, robe part on top, but it was basically her, her wasp costume just modified slightly. Yeah, also, she found some like quantum how did you, realm store. Quantum, or, yeah, quantum, quantum realm store. Like, <laughs> tape. <laughs> how dirty <laughs> must she have been? Oh, my God. Well, she's – yeah, no, she's – well, she's probably I've smelled horrible. I've been swimming with shook the bears all yeah, my life. she's smaller <laughs> than dirt, though. So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And I think that she went to sleep because when in the very opening scene, she's like, oh, work's going to be so boring that I might fall asleep and then closes her mm-hmm. eyes. And I think that's – and then Hank had to wake her up. So I think she was doing everything with her mind half the time. But then that doesn't explain how she has this badass wardrobe. 
Well, she like so. she well like I know in the comics, um, there's a couple times where Ant Man went into the quantum realm and he had to like literally fight his way out. Like it was almost like Mad Max levels of insanity. Well, they or like or like Jumanji, like, like the first one. What they called the like, Micronauts. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff like that. But like, yeah, it was basically like he went into Jumanji and then, you know had to fight all kinds of weird beings and stuff with his bare hands. I almost so, wonder... Yeah. Like, on that, that whole, like, the fighting thing, I mean, she had to, because that's why she made the scythe or the, mm-hmm. the spear or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but I wish they would have shown more. I mean, they could probably do a full movie of what happened to her in the quantum realm. Yeah. You could cast the girl who is playing Cat- Catwoman Cat- in... Gotham. <laughs> Just wait a couple years. We'll have her do it, and then it'll be perfect. I mean, or you just de-age her like they're doing with Samuel yeah. Like they're doing, yeah. Captain Marvel. Yeah. I mean, they're going to also true. have to de-age Clark Gregg as well. I mean, he yep, looks yep. exactly the same if you that look at his true. picture. He does, back yeah. when he was like FBI agent in some TV show. Yeah. It was like 1990, and he's exactly yeah, the same. <laughs> he looks the same. But now, um, I was... What was I thinking? Um, okay, for those of you guys who know the history of Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne in the comic books, uh, what do you think about them hiding that? What do you think about them like ignoring that completely? The slap? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Can you explain? So those of you who don't know, a long time ago in the comics, I think it was 70s or 80s, um, Hank Pym actually hit Janet Van Dyne. Like, slapped her across the face. That Batman and Robin meme where he's slapping him, it's exactly the same thing. So it was a big deal because that was spousal abuse, whatever. Um... And they actually got a divorce over it. And it's been like a burden on Hank Pym in the comics for years and years and years. So um, I thought they were going to completely avoid it by by keeping Janet Van Dyne dead in the movies. Because that's that's what they did in the first Ant-Man. And now that she's back... Now it's kind of like, oh, that's not a thing of uh, about the character. Well, that doesn't need to be canon for the movies. Yeah. No, it's just it's just interesting that like, um, it's almost like they don't want to talk about it. Sure. Um, I mean, because like, I mean, um, if that would happen in movies, then yeah. it probably would happen in the Nick's Ant Man movie. Yeah. See, but Goliath is Black Goliath, and then yes. Col Obsidian is Black Dwarf. Okay, yeah. so we change we names change already, things. and then yeah. let's keep it PC because this is the Marvel that everyone can love and everyone yeah. can enjoy. That's what I feel like they're See, doing. And they did, yeah, they did the same that's thing. for the kids. Yeah, they did the same thing with uh, Tony Stark um, because in the comics he was an alcoholic. I mean, I feel like of uh, Iron Man three, they kind of dealt they, with well, it, not got too, drunk, to, but that's the thing. yeah, People but it wasn't, drunk, yeah, it wasn't stuff, anything crazy. But, it, but like, no, in the in the in the comics, it was so bad that um, that Rhodey had to take over as Iron Man. Well, it's a it's a whole uh, storyline. What is it called? The, yeah. the Devil, you know, or something yeah, like that. Or, yeah, yeah, or the Devil Inside, or something like that. Yeah, um, it was number two. Yeah. Well, number two had a lot of stuff. <laughs> they was, just made him a lush, really. That's what I was saying. Yeah, they ju- he just got drunk and screwed up a couple of times. But like, what I was saying is, in the comics, it it was constant. It was he was drinking all the time, all day, every day. Um, and like I said, it, he literally had to stop being Iron Man. Um, well, and also, I actually thought Civil War wasn't happen. just one movie. It was a whole entire giant <laughs> series involving yeah. X-Men yeah. and 
superhero registration, not yeah, we've got yeah. some Sokovia Accords. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they do kind of tweak things here and there, but they're mm -hmm. trying to make it to where it's like, if you want to know our dirty history, go to Marvel Unlimited yeah. and you can read every yeah. single one of our comic books. Otherwise, this is our universe. This is what we're doing. <laughs> yep. I, and I they remember. did... Iron Man 2, they had the callback where he's walking over and goes, give me everything from Project Pegasus, Exodus, and Goliath. So we've got mm. Goliath. Pegasus was showcased in Avengers, the first movie, but is also a huge callback to Captain Marvel. So we're going to see that. Mm. And then I have no idea what Exodus, Exodus is other than the X-Men cool villain. Comes in, 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 um... That'd be cool if maybe it comes in play in Avengers Four. I was like, thinking as, possibly like Exodus, as a nuclear option. Yeah, yeah. that's Once. what I'm saying. Like maybe that's like a nuclear option. Like you know, if, if everything else, if the world's basically about to die, this is what we're gonna do. <laughs> What's Pegasus? Pegasus. Uh, that's what they were using with the. Uh, Cosmic Cube. Um, it's basically like to do with dimensional travel and then it's uh, s space travel as well. So Captain Marvel is part of the space program, part of S.W.O.R.D., not S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, and I guess there, that's going to be explained a lot more in Captain Marvel. Okay. Yeah. Um, I... I like I said I really loved it. Um, the the different they kind of brought in some maybe like C or D list characters in the Marvel universe, like uh, Elias Star who is Egghead, um, Goliath yeah. uh, who interesting who was killed in the Civil War event in the comics. Um, that was pretty interesting. And then, of course, Ghost. Um, so she's uh, 100, almost 100% a different character from the one in the comics, but I still liked it. But if you liked Ghost, go check out Ghost in the comics, especially when he was part of Thunderbolts. Um, that'd be interesting if we get a Thunderbolts movie out of this, because... Um, if you guys don't know, Thunderbolts is basically Suicide Squad, but for Marvel. There are villains that are doing good things on a team, doing good stuff. But And they're <laughs> run by Thunderbolt Ross, who is yeah. the general that started the Sokovia War yeah. Accords and hates Bruce Banner. Yeah. And and like He Ghost, turns into the Red Hulk. Yeah, and Ghost is one of the one of the members at one point, and it'd be kind of cool to see maybe all the villains that we actually have still sitting around join, which isn't very many because they like to kill them off. <laughs> Doesn't <laughs> like, uh, Venom join Thunderbolts at one point too? Yes, yeah, he's. I think he's currently in the Thunderbolts at the moment. It would be really great if they did tie in the Venom yeah, movie uh, to Tom cool. Holland. I I'd love to see. Yeah, I agree. It, I would love to see that. Mm -hmm. Like maybe like a ghost and venom and then Abomination's still out there frozen. That'd be kind yep. of cool to see him join up in a team. Was Abomination uh, an Incredible Hulk? Yes. Yeah, and there was a throwaway line somewhere, I don't remember what it was, but someone said that Abomination is frozen. That's I somewhere. That, yeah. I can't remember what where that was or what, but that would be really cool to see um all that kind of come out from this. But yeah, I, I loved seeing all the, the tiny characters who most people don't know about. Okay, so I was just going to say that for me, I've noticed that Marvel realized they keep messing up with their villains. Yes, the stories are about the heroes, but you've got the Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay, he was an actual fleshed out villain. He's still alive. Then mm -hmm. we've got it to where uh, Thanos is still alive. Okay, he's there. He's a fleshed out villain. You now have Ghost isn't a villain, but has a story that was fleshed out. And then most likely, I feel like Killmonger is going to be saved. Black Panther's not going to let him die. And uh, he's going to come back. 
I don't know. <laughs> that was a political statement and stuff. Like, like that was kind of the point that he's a martyr. Yeah, for his own cause. I think that would. I think that would take away from his story if they brought him back somehow. So, I just think good for him. Um... I mean, overall, it's a good film. The only thing that I would have to say like that is kind of stupid was um, if you're the Ant-Man and you're under house arrest, are you just going really for ankle bracelets, him? So, and, But they thought that he did destroy it, but... I can't yeah, they that. thought I the suit was destroyed. Him. No, but... but I, can't, I can't believe also, the FBI actually believed him. And, you know, but also the... He needed the... the anklet would show where he was. That's why they had that ant wearing it doing his stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... so if it was I, mean, sitting, I understand it was that. But, I mean, yeah, but I think the, the ankle is just kind of, you know... Yeah. <laughs> so, Daughter walking I mean, on the ant. Of great jokes <laughs> and stuff, and it's crazy, I thought, but I think overall it's a good film. So, I mean, definitely watch it again um, to miss all the stuff that you know, I might miss that we were talking about and stuff like that. Um, oh, also, we didn't mention one thing. Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga. <laughs> Baba Yaga. <laughs> oh, and the magic. How does he do that? <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Close-up <laughs> magic. Yeah, was, uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he pulls all the cards <laughs> <laughs> like, like every time he's like, Baba Yaga. Just like whispering Baba Yaga. Just like randomly. Oh, that's so great. It is truth serum. <laughs> it's truth serum. I thought it was a great movie. I think that uh, that it was a nice, refreshing, uh, like a breath of fresh air from uh, after watching the, the very heavy Infinity War. Uh, I feel like... Um, I feel like that it's definitely up there with uh, Thor Ragnarok and the original Guardians of the Galaxy in terms of comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, and the action was done really well. I, I think as a whole, the movie was um, was a hit. I, I I wish I think more people should go out and see it because as as I understand, um, it's not the most money making Marvel film they've had. Uh, the, the the audience didn't know one thing though. The whole movie, whether you liked it or not, honest, honestly, the end credit scenes are worth the film itself. Well, the people you're talking to right now would have to listen to our entire podcast, and now they've been spoiled. <laughs> they all spoiled. There you go. There's the quote right there. <laughs> but if you've listened to this entire podcast, make sure that you share this with your friends. YouTube.com slash Life Tech Gaming. Facebook.com slash Life Tech Gaming. <laughs> Life Tech Gaming.net. <laughs>